Cisco Electric here. Today is Sunday, July 20th, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Lucid Motors has announced a partnership with Uber Technologies and autonomous vehicle startup Neuro to deploy over 20,000 self-driving Lucid Gravity SUVs as robo-taxis starting in 2026. The collaboration aims to launch a premium robo-taxi service exclusively on Uber's platform, with the first rollout planned for a major U.S. city next year. As part of the deal, Uber will invest $300 million directly into Lucid Motors, acquiring approximately 3% of the company's total capitalization, according to a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Additionally, Uber will make a separate multi-hundred million dollar investment in Neuro, though the exact amount remains undisclosed. The Lucid Gravity SUVs, equipped with Neuro's Level 4 autonomous driving technology, will be owned and operated by Uber or its third-party fleet partners. A prototype of the Lucid Neuro RoboTaxi is already undergoing testing at Neuro's Las Vegas facility. EVs are prime candidates for RoboTaxi services considering their longevity, durability, and low cost per mile operation. Tesla launched and expanded their service in Austin, Texas. Their training fleet consists of several million vehicles across the globe and billions of miles of real-world driving data. For scale, another Uber partner, Google's Waymo, has also been operating across many U.S. cities with a fleet of over 1,500 vehicles and over 100 million miles driven. I've had the opportunity to ride in autonomous vehicles operated by GM's crews before it was closed down, as well as Waymo on several occasions. I personally prefer to ride in a Waymo over a typical human Uber driver. The autonomous car won't cancel your ride once it's committed, and they drive smoothly and quite predictably. Personality is not a problem. Windows, sounds, and smells inside an autonomous vehicle are controlled entirely by the paying guest. The downsides of an autonomous vehicle can include a lack of immediate awareness of messes created by previous riders and higher susceptibility to unusual or intentional disruptive behavior of people outside the vehicle. Autonomous ride hailing partnerships or deployments have only just begun. Have you tried or would you be willing to try riding an autonomous EV from Waymo, Uber, Tesla, Pony AI, or Vern? Japanese battery manufacturer Panasonic celebrated the grand opening of its new $4 billion battery factory in DeSoto, Kansas, marking it as one of the world's largest automotive battery plants spanning 4.7 million square feet. The plant is projected to create 4,000 direct jobs and up to 8,000 indirect jobs, making it the largest economic development project in Kansas history. Spanning 300 acres, the facility has begun mass production of 2170 cylindrical lithium-ion battery cells, with plans to reach full production by the end of 2025. Disclosed customers for this factory's output include Tesla, Lucid Motors, and the lesser-known Hexagon Purus, which provides packs to their clients like Toyota's commercial truck brand, Hino Truck, and California-based electric truck manufacturer, Harbinger Motors. The Kansas factory is expected to reach an annual production capacity of approximately 32 gigawatt hours, boosting Panasonic's U.S. production to 73 gigawatt hours when combined with its Nevada facility. Battery manufacturing is not stopping. According to the International Energy Agency, United States battery manufacturing capacity has doubled since 2022, reaching over 200 gigawatt hours in 2024. On top of that, 700 gigawatt hours of additional manufacturing capacity is under construction. And if you've been watching this show, you'll know we've reported on each of those projects on previous episodes of The Current. About 10 new factories supplying about 420 gigawatt hours total are expected to come online this year. That output can supply about 5 million EV battery packs annually. If you'd like to dig into more details, I'll put links to a battery industry tracking resource in this video's description. Despite this progress, U.S. battery production and growth are dwarfed by the industry in China, which contributes more than 75% of the global supply. This week, the country implemented new battery technology regulations. The Chinese Ministry of Commerce now requires government licenses for the transfer of eight key EV battery technologies, including three core technologies for lithium iron phosphate, or LFP batteries, and five for lithium production. 
This policy could hinder Chinese battery manufacturers like BYD and CATL from establishing factories on foreign soil. Just a couple of weeks ago, we reported that Ford Motor Company resumed production of the LFP factory in Marshall, Michigan, where they plan to license battery technology from CATL. A Ford spokesperson told CNN the company is not affected by the new restrictions. China's Goshen, who is the world's third largest EV battery producer and is backed by Volkswagen, had plans to build out a manufacturing facility in Michigan and Illinois as well. The Michigan plant was paused primarily because of local backlash, but the company is actively hiring for the Illinois facility, which is under construction and is expected to produce 35 gigawatt hours of battery cells per year. The regulations do not detail explicit penalties for non-compliance or reveal how many licenses will be available. We will keep you informed if more details become available and if the impacts affect US EV battery production and advancements. In a separate development, China is set to deter drivers from accessing one-pedal driving on all-electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles starting January 2026, citing behavioral safety concerns. The new standard prohibits vehicles from defaulting to a mode where releasing the accelerator pedal brings the vehicle to a complete stop, requiring drivers to use the brake pedal instead. Regulators say that one-pedal driving can lead to delayed driver reactions in emergencies. They elaborate that drivers accustomed to this mode may rely too heavily on regenerative braking and fail to press the brake pedal quickly enough when strong braking is needed, increasing the risk of accidents due to pedal misapplication or confusion. While one-pedal driving can remain an optional setting, it must be manually selected each time the vehicle is started, effective January of 2027 for all vehicles. I don't know about you, but I hope this does not become a global trend. One-pedal driving is a great feature that not only helps prolong brake life, but it also recovers range whenever the accelerator is released. The feature is especially helpful for those of us who regularly drive through hilly or mountainous topography. If you drive an EV, how do you prefer to set your regenerative braking? Back in April, we reported on the updated Subaru Solterra and new EV sibling called the Trail Seeker. Both are based on Toyota's BZ and BZ Woodland models on the ETNGA platform. Shortly after, Toyota announced their refreshed EV lineup along with a smaller model called the CHR. Well, now it's Subaru's turn to announce a counterpart to the CHR. This week, they introduced the 2026 Subaru Uncharted, a compact crossover SUV roughly the size of the gas-powered Subaru Crosstrek. The Uncharted features the familiar 74.7 kWh lithium-ion battery, delivering an estimated range of over 300 miles for the front-wheel drive premium trim and 290 miles for the all-wheel drive Sport and GT trims. Yes, you heard me right, front-wheel drive is now available for the first time on a Subaru since the 1990s. That's the consequence of actually being a Toyota. The front-wheel drive model will produce 221 horsepower, while the all-wheel drive Sport and GT trims will deliver 338 horsepower, achieving 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 5 seconds. All models will include a North American charging system port for Tesla supercharger access, with a 10 to 80% charge in approximately 30 minutes at up to 150 kilowatts, and an 11 kilowatt onboard charger for level 2 charging. Inside, the Uncharted features a 14 inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, dual wireless charging pads, and Subaru's EyeSight Safety Suite, including automatic emergency braking and blind spot monitoring. The SUV will have an 8.3-inch ground clearance and optional X-mode off-road settings, along with 25 cubic feet of cargo space. Production begins later in 2025, with U.S. and Canadian deliveries expected in early 2026. Pricing hasn't yet been finalized. Subaru has sold 6,501 Solteras so far this year, which is up 20% year-to-date. For comparison, Subaru's best-selling Forester sold 95,972 during the same period, and the Crosstrek, that is about the same size as the new Uncharted, sold 90,334. Do you think Subaru is on the right track to capture more EV market share? The IANA EV charging network backed by eight automakers has announced a partnership with gas station and convenience store chain Wawa 
to deploy fast charging stations at Wawa locations nationwide. The collaboration marks IANA's largest single charging commitment to date, pushing its contracted charging base to over 3,000. Each station will include 400 kilowatt DC fast charging dispensers, car care amenities, and canopies to protect AV drivers from the elements. Four Wawa rechargery locations are currently under construction in Florida, with the first to open this upcoming week in Daytona Beach, Florida. IANA already has 212 stalls live on their network since their launch in February of 2024. The company plans to deploy over 30,000 charging points by 2030. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. If you found value in our coverage, we ask that you share this video online and be sure to subscribe so that we can continue producing this program. Thank you for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.